you also talk about the importance of the velocity of money? What does that mean? And what's the consequences to an investor? So if we think about what traditional planning tells us to do, right? They'll tell us to put money in IRAs, 401k, SEP plans, mutual funds, and you're supposed to leave that money in the accounts for how long? <laughs> Until you die. <laughs> Until you die, right? Because when, when, when is a good time to take the money out? Well, the market's taken off, don't take it out now, or the market just corrected, you want to buy back in, you know? So when is a good time to have liquidity use and control of your money, right? But when we talk about velocity and money, let's look at what the institutions do. Because in my mind, the institutions know how to create wealth. And so, when, Jay, when you and I park our money, our capital into a bank, right? What does the bank do with those dollars? They loan it out. They loan it out. So the bank doesn't take that money and they don't park it in their CDs, IRAs or 403Bs or 401Ks that they tell us to put our money into, right? They actually take our money. They'll loan it. So if I take the money to the bank, I deposit my capital. You're a business owner that needs to buy a piece of equipment. You happen to bank at the same bank I do. You're going to go to the bank and borrow their money or actually my money. Right. And then in turn, you're going to turn around and you're going to purchase some equipment from the manufacturer who happens to bank at the same bank. Right. And so that deposit is going to come back into the bank. Well, how many uses did I get with my dollar when I put the money into the bank? Uh, I one. Got, I got one. How many did the bank get? Multiple. Multiple. Right. But see, velocity. So this is the economic principle. Mo velocity is money. Velocity of money is the money in movement. And if you understand collateral and if you understand liquidity, use and control of your money, having access to capital is what allows you to create those opportunities. To where you can keep your money in movement, but you never want to interrupt the, the compounding curve. You would never want to lose that forward momentum of your money to go do other things, just like what the banks do. See, we're a pawn in their game. They have the rules. We just, we don't look at the playbook. We don't look, understand what, what the play code is and, and do what they do. We do the exact opposite. And it, what really boggles my mind, if you know, I start to get passionate about this, is that the banks do the exact opposite of what they tell us to do with our money, yet they're the ones making all the money. Why aren't we doing what they do? And it goes into exactly what you're coaching and teaching with your, with your students. Yeah. It's like, you don't have to look very far downtown. Who is it that owns the biggest buildings in the downtown cities, right? That's right. It's the banks. <laughs> it's the banks. The banks. So, hey, look, perhaps we as individuals should consider being the bank, which is sort of another conversation. Uh, it, but it I, is. I, yeah. Go and, ahead. It, and it's just, you're right. It's another conversation, but the whole point is, is that we, so the last 12 years is I've just helping people understand it's a paradigm shift, right? Cause we've been ingrained in, and taught to do certain things with our money, but it's the definition of insanity, Jay. It's doing the same thing over and over and over again, trying to get a different result. And if you exactly. look around our, and if you look around, are people able to retire at the same standard of living that they had during their working career? No. no. So it's broken. I mean, it's broken. And if we help people understand how wealth works, right? That's what's going to help them get to the next level of, of overall planning.